Hey guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. I've been getting a lot of questions about my Argentine Boas lately, so I thought I'd give you guys an update on my breeding group and show you some of my animals. I'm also going to show you an example of adult animals that show quite a bit of variation in size, so be sure to stay tuned. So, as many of you guys know, Argentines are one of my top favorite locality boas. And they're special to me. They're actually the first locality bow that I kept. You know, the first bow I had is just a, you know, Colombian type pet store boa. But I got my first Argentine boas back in the late 90s, which were my first locality boas. Also the first boas I bred with a litter born in 2005. And actually this female is descended from that, the same parents of that litter. She was from the last litter that I had from my original pair. And this female was born in 2015. And you can see she's now adult size, probably about seven, seven and a half feet. So a good size animal. So Argentine boas have seen quite a resurgence in popularity in the last few years. I remember just, you know, not even 10 years ago, they weren't really that popular and you could get them really inexpensively and it seemed like there was a large supply of them and you know people didn't seem to want them but then about five years ago they just really started taking off in popularity the prices went way up the supply had gone way down and now they're just um they're hard to get and they're quite expensive unfortunately but you know i do think they're worth it they're a great boa to keep they're one of the largest of the locality boas you know, they can get to up to around 10 feet or so. Not quite as big as some BCC true red tails, but you know, pretty close. And they just have this really neat look um, with these dark collars. This female was born here in uh, 2015. And um, you know, she's one of the, I held back a couple from that litter, been growing them up. Unfortunately, 2015 was the last time I had a litter of Argentine boas, it just, Unfortunately it hasn't happened and you know, I actually did pair her up this year with a male Unfortunately, I didn't get any babies, which I'll say more about in a little bit But hopefully next year I'll finally break the dry spell it just for a very long time I didn't have a male and I was grow growing up the females and you know Sometimes it just doesn't happen for one reason or another So I remember back I bred this these these animals the first time I didn't really know anything about boas breeding to know what the uh, post ovulation shed was or any of the milestones basically was just keeping them in a neodesia plastics reptile cage you know using heat tape no thermostat um, i think i dropped the temperatures but it really wasn't controlled at all it was really just kind of hit or miss and i had my pair i put them together and I had actually tried breeding them a few years earlier and wasn't successful because they were only like, I don't know, three or four years at the time. But, you know, they were probably around, I don't know, six or seven when I bred them the first time, put them together, you know, they mated, and then I got my babies. And I, I the babies just popped out. I didn't, I wasn't expecting a due date or anything because I didn't even, you know, I wasn't even aware of the concept. And then a couple of years later in 2007, I wasn't even planning on breeding them. I just put my male in with the female because I was cleaning the cage, forgot about him for a few hours. And then a few months later, you know, the babies popped out. And I remember at the time I wasn't really connected to the reptile community. Um, I actually ended up selling them on Craigslist for like $125. This is like back in um, 2007, 2008. So kind of crazy to think about. So this female is now, um, seven years old from my third litter of, from that original pair born in 2015. And she's pretty, you know, she's probably been ready to breed for at least a couple years. Sometimes they, they just don't breed for whatever reason. And I paired her up with a younger male who I'll show you in a couple minutes. Seemed like he really did put in a good effort trying to breed to her. So I'm not quite sure what happened, but a lot of times I just don't have luck the first time. And more often than not, when I pair them up the following year, I have a successful litter. So this is a pretty good size animal. And you know, she's eaten pretty consistently um, over the course of the last seven years since I had her. Real nice animal, nice dark colors, nice lighter uh, markings. This one isn't quite, you know, deep 
dark black, more like a really dark, dark rich brown with kind of like lighter ivory colored markings. But just a really nice looking example of a Argentine boa constrictor. Here's another female that I held back from that 2015 litter. And as you can see, she's quite a bit smaller than the female I just showed you. I'd say she's probably about a foot or so smaller and quite a bit less thick around. And you know, animals just vary in size. And I've done quite a few videos lately about growth rates in boas and you know what's normal, what's not. And you know, the idea behind these videos is I don't want people to freak out when they see all these comments on social media about you know how fast your boa should be growing or if your boa is growing too fast, etc. Um, this animal just didn't grow as fast. And although they get a very similar feeding regimen, basically I feed my animals every 10 days to two weeks or so when they're growing. Uh, this animal, because she's smaller, she gets smaller meals. You know, she gets, you know, she got like medium rats for quite a while. She's on large rats right now. Whereas the female I just showed you has been on extra large for quite a while. So she's uh, getting less food per meal, even though the meals are the same. Uh, you know duration spaced out so even with a similar feeding schedule because the larger animals are getting larger prey items they're maybe going to grow a little bit faster so this animal I'm probably not quite ready to breed even though she's seven years old just want to put a little bit more size on her so if I do breed an animal next year it'll be the female that I just showed you um, so again, don't, don't freak out about when people comment about your boa size being too big or too small. You know, you're the one who knows best about your boa. Okay, so unless your boa is obviously not growing or it's obviously overweight, which of course are not good, and I've made very quite a few videos about that in the past. You know, if your boa is growing a little bit slower, a little bit faster than someone claims it should be, just tune them out because that kind of noise on social media just kind of really gets to you sometimes and we just want to enjoy this hobby of these beautiful animals without worrying about what's going on on Facebook. So those two animals I showed you were holdbacks from 2015 but I ended up picking up a pair, a male and a female in 2019. You know, finally had a male enter the collection that I could breed to those two females. And this is actually the female and this is a three-year-old Argentine. So you can see how much larger she is for a three-year-old compared to the seven-year-old animal I just showed you. I would say she's a little bit longer than that seven-year-old animal. Quite a bit girthier as well. This female I actually just started feeding extra large rats to. So even though she's on the same feeding schedule about once every 10 days to two weeks, She's just getting more prey, you know, more body mass from those larger rats. And, you know, she ends up growing a little bit faster probably because she can eat the larger rats. So I think animals that just have a genetic potential to get a little bit bigger are going to have that compounded by the fact that you can feed them larger prey items at a younger age and they can put on more body mass. So, of course, you know, people will vary the feeding schedule and, you know, people will power feed, which you don't want to do. But there is some wiggle room as far as the amount of uh, uh, meals you can feed to an animal, how frequently and how fast they're going to end up growing. So this animal, she's, I don't think she'll be ready next year. I'm not planning on breeding her next year, but possibly the following year. So she might be ready to breed in the fall of 2023. We'll just have to see what's in my lineup, but really nice animal, real dark colors, real nice whitish off-white kind of semi-circular markings on her side. Just a really beautiful looking example of an Argentine boa. Now I want to show you a couple male Argentines that I have. This is the male from the pair that I got in 2019. So this guy is the same age as the female I just showed you. Not quite as big. You know, he, this guy's right now, he's on large rats. So a good size animal for a three year old Argentine. But again, they do have variability. You know, the females tend to be larger and you know, some animals just grow faster than others. But nice looking animal. This guy um, possibly could breed next year. I mean, the males do breed at a younger age, 
but I'll probably, I don't know if I'm gonna use this guy or my other male who I'll show you in a sec. I might even, you know, try a multiple male situation, you know, depending on what, what works out, but um, still formulating my plans for the 2022 to 2023 breeding season. So I'm not exactly sure, but I expect to have at least one pair of Argentines in the breeding season ahead. One more animal for today's video. This is my other male. This is a Max Pink Bloodline animal that was born in 2018. So you can see he's you know, not quite adult size, but getting pretty close. And this is a selectively bred Bloodline from uh, Bob Guerriere from uh, Ancient Reproductions. And he picked animals that retained the pink coloration. So you can see this guy's still got his pink coloration. Uh, normally they, they, the Argentines only have this as babies and the pink baits but these guys retain it to adulthood. So they're a very colorful bloodline of uh, pure Argentine boa. They also have this really cool pattern. Just a really nice looking animal. So at the time I got this guy, he was about a year and a half old back in 2020. And you know, Bob raises up the animals for a little while before selling them. And so I was hoping that, um, or, you know, I picked, I, picked a slightly older animal because it gave me a little bit of a head start to get the animal ready for breeding and I did pair this guy up with the first female I showed you this year and he really did put in a good breeding effort so I'm not exactly sure what happened um, you know maybe something with the female maybe that just wasn't gonna happen this year I mean I don't know but uh, we'll give it another shot you know quite a few times I have had a situation where a pairing did not work the first year and then the second year I pair up the same pairing and it's successful so sometimes these animals just take a little bit of time to get to know each other you know before they can you know do the deed and make the babies in addition to the beautiful looks of this guy he's also really enjoyable to handle he just seems a little bit more mellow than my other Argentines so he's if I'm gonna get an Argentine now to just handle and admire usually it's this guy I uh, just enjoyed growing them up the last couple years. So let's hope that he makes some babies for us next year. Because, um, you know, there sure aren't enough Argentines on the market right now. You know, a lot of people want these understandably, but there's just not a lot of them to come by. I think Argentines popularity is a really good indicator of the popularity of the locality boa hobby as a whole. These guys have just gotten more and more popular the last five years or so. And, you know, hopefully they'll continue to be popular. I know it's, we all kind of, uh, you know, would like them to be like a, back to the original price and the original availability five or 10 years ago. Unfortunately, I just don't think that's gonna happen ever. You know, especially with the current situation with the inflation everything not just boas but pretty much everything that we buy and use in everyday life keeps going up in price and the price increases of everything in the last couple of years have just been insane uh, it's costing a lot more for me just for my overhead costs for rodents and for electricity and supplies uh, and you know every time you go to the grocery store i'm sure you know what i'm talking about with you know these products just keep on going up in price. And we all hear this official inflation figure from the US government of 9%. But if you look at the actual year to year price increases over the last year, it's a hell of a lot more than 9% on pretty much everything that we use. So you know that these statistics given out by the government are you know, highly suspect. Unfortunately, I don't think that this is gonna change anytime soon. And you know, I'm not an economist, this is an economics channel. But I would forecast that the next few years are going to be pretty rough economically. This inflation isn't going to go away for quite a while. And we're just going to have to deal with the higher prices and the reduced availability of many of the things that, you know, we love. So, you know, of course, that's the subject for another video. So at that note, I'll just leave you with this look at this beautiful Max Pink Argentine Boa. And fingers crossed that this guy should be producing some babies for us next year. Anyway, I hope you liked this video and found it somewhat uh, informative. As always, shoot me any questions or comments you might have. Thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.